All over the world, there are phenomena that have been discovered and then researched by scientists. They found explanations for a lot of them, but haven't been able to solve the riddles of a few others. Yep, I've been coming out here for probably oh, 12, 15 years. I've From a tiny cabin that defies all laws of gravity to a forest filled with J-shaped trees, here are the 20 most mysterious things science still can't explain. Devil's Kettle Waterfall Located inside Judge C.R. Magny State Park in Minnesota, USA, is the Devil's Kettle, a mysterious geological phenomenon. It contains two streams, the waterfall itself at the right and a second stream above the left that disappears down a hole known as the Devil's Kettle. No one knows where it goes. The waterfall on the right lands at the base of the falls and continues downstream. Everyone sees that, but the other one goes where? Well, it's believed that the water makes its way out to Lake Superior through underground passages, but no one knows how this happens or can even prove it. Over the years, people have thrown stuff into the water to see if it'll come out, and nothing ever has. Researchers have dropped ping pong balls, colored dyes, and a lot of other things. None has ever been found. Recently, some scientists from the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources said they believe the water ends up further downstream in the Brule Lake. Where do you think the water goes? Another theory about the Devil's Kettle is that millions of years ago, a lava tube formed when the rocks first solidified. But this can't be true because the rock at Devil's Kettle waterfalls is rhyolite and lava tubes never form in rhyolite. They form in basalt flowing down the slopes of volcanoes. We can't also say there's a large underground cave because underground caves form in the limestone rock and there's no limestone rock in the area. So you see, so far, science has been unable to explain the puzzling Devil's Kettle waterfalls. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. This Egyptian artifact will give you chills. The paintings on the wall tell us one thing. The skeleton was found somewhere in Egypt. At first glance, it looks like a skeleton. But can we really call it that? The arms, chest, and skull make it look like a costume. Like a kid, they went overboard with Halloween and decided to kill the outfit completely. The oblong head and silver and gold colors of the artifact resemble the many aliens we see in Hollywood movies. So we're left wondering what this strange discovery is. Will you help us find out? What do you think the creature is? What does it look like? We're interested in what you have to say. Drop your opinions in the comment section. We'll be looking out. Remember to add the hashtag missing topic with your comment. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Rainbow Mountain. The locals call it Vinicunca. We call it the Rainbow Mountain. It's one of the most popular tourist destinations in Peru. And that makes sense because the beautiful array of colors set in the middle of the Andean mountain range is a sight to behold. Now, what is Rainbow Mountain? It's precisely what the name says. It's an unbelievably colorful rock formation of the Andes mountain range that's located 5,200 meters above sea level. It's located 60 miles southeast of the city of Cusco. The mountain is also called the Seven Colors Mountain because of its seven rainbow shades. Now, how did this work of art come to be? There was an erosion of the minerals inside the mountain because of volcanic activity and a few tectonic shifts of the Nazca plates. After this, the land was exposed by some natural elements like wind, rain, and snowfall, and several materials, including copper, iron, and sulfur, overlap to create the colorful mountain in question today. However, the mountain was buried for a long time by a thick layer of ice and was only discovered some 40 years ago, when rising temperatures melted the snow. The red color is made up of clay and clay stones. The white color results from substances rich in calcium carbonates like sandstone and quartzose. The yellow color comprises layers of iron sulfide. The pink color results from the mixture of mud, red clay, and sand. The earthy brown color comes from rock and magnesium. And finally, the green and blue colors come from a compound of phyllites and clays rich in ferromagnesian. From these, you can tell that Rainbow Mountain is not just aesthetically pleasing, it also has a priceless geological naturalistic value. 100 million year old plesiosaur fossil. 100 million years old? That's old. The fossil hunters from the Queensland Museum Network definitely found more than they were looking for when they went on a hunt. The group unearthed the complete fossil of the elasmosaur, a type of plesiosaur near the remote western Queensland town of McKinley. 
The story of how the fossils were found is quite interesting. A member of Rock Chicks, Cassandra Prince, found the bones on a ranch in western Queensland. Imagine finding a skull looking up at you in your ranch or backyard. That's what Prince went through. But she was calm enough to call the museum, and they named the animal Little Prince in her honor. An elasmosaur is an ancient long-necked marine reptile. They swam in the ocean hundreds of millions of years ago, the same period dinosaurs paraded the earth, and they were really bizarre animals. They had long necks, flippers, tiny tails, and large bodies that could reach 43 feet. Little Prince was only 20 feet, he wasn't the largest in his days, and it was the first time in Australia that its head and body were found in one piece. If you care about dinosaur-like creatures, you'll probably be as excited as the paleontologists were when they saw this animal. One of them described it as the Rosetta Stone of marine paleontology because it may be the key to unraveling the diversity and evolution of long-necked plesiosaurs in Cretaceous Australia. Good luck to them! Mystery Spot Mystery Spot Why is this place called a mystery spot? What's so mysterious about it? Well, let's find out. There's the story of the Prather family, who bought a small cabin from a persistent seller in 1939. The seller said the surrounding area was too small for him, so eventually they bought the land. You can imagine how surprised they were when they got to a spot and the compass started going crazy. The portable radio didn't work either, and this spot was only a circular area of 46 meters in diameter. George Prather wasted no time. By 1940, he's made the site accessible to the public as an attraction site. And who can blame him? Everyone should see such a wonder. The mystery spot is located in a redwood forest east of downtown Santa Cruz. In this little cabin, the laws of physics cease to exist. And gravity? It kind of goes crazy. You push a ball and it rolls uphill. Trees grow in strange ways and people stand at extreme angles without falling. And here's a big one. You may experience a change in height. How cool is that? Over the years, scientists have come up with theories to explain the mystery spot. Some say there's a hole in the ozone layer. Some say it's a magnetic anomaly from a crashed alien spacecraft. Isn't that hilarious? Some people even think that the entire thing is an optical illusion. Well, we don't know the answers. What we do know is that the Prathers made an excellent choice when they bought this piece of land. Moraki Boulders On the east coast of South Island, New Zealand, in a town called Otago, you'll find the Moraki Boulders. There are boulders worldwide, all right, but these are unique because of their size and almost spherical shape. One third of the boulders are between 1.6 to 3.3 feet in diameter, and the other two thirds are about 4.9 to 7.2 feet. According to local Maori legend, the boulders are remains of eel baskets. Calabashes and Kumara washed ashore from the wreck of a large sailing canoe called Erai Te Uru. They say that the reticulated patterning on the boulders are the remains of the canoe's fishing nets. 60 million years ago, settlement with small fragments like shells and plants accumulated on the seafloor. Slowly, calcite build up around organic nuclei, creating spherical nodules with harder outer layers. The inner material is dehydrated to give cracks which spread from the center out to the rim. As groundwater conditions changed, these cracks filled with varying mineral deposits the largest boulders took about 4 million years to form. Yeah, it took that long. The boulders used to be more than they are today. Prior to the legislation, many smaller boulders were removed from the beach. Strangest Things Discovered in Devon Cave Archaeologists made a once-in-a-century discovery of the remains of several huge extinct beasts at Sherford, a new town being built in Devon. The finds include a woolly mammoth, wolf, and rhino, and they give an insight into the Ice Age Britain about 30 to 60,000 years ago. The lead archaeologist of the project described it as a spectacular find. The tusk of the mammoth was carefully extracted as well as the other bones from its skull, skeleton, and parts of the woolly rhino. The archaeologists believe that the animals may have fallen down a hole and died there. The skeleton of the wolf is complete so they believe the wolf went in voluntarily and alive to look for its supper and couldn't get back out. The wolf must have cried for help and got none before it eventually died. Now, its bones are in a lab somewhere, being examined by scientists and archaeologists. They also found partial remains of horses, reindeer, mountain hares, red foxes, and hyenas. 
In addition, there were bones of various small mammals like bats and shrews. The discovery of the remains of such a wide range of species in one place gives a brilliant insight into the animals that walked the earth in the Ice Age Britain thousands of years ago. Boiling River What comes to your mind when you hear of a boiling river? Is the river steaming hot? What exactly is it? Well, let's find out. The Boiling River, known by natives as Shanae Tepinchka, is a stream 6 meters deep and 25 meters wide, which flows for over 4 miles and maintains a temperature that can reach 95 degrees. In case you don't know, there's a very high degree of heat and is capable of killing any form of life in minutes. For many years, many scholars thought that Boiling River was just a legend, a phenomenon only talked about in stories. According to the legend, Spanish conquistadors ventured into the rainforest in search of gold. Only a few of them returned, and they told stories of man-eating snakes, poisoned water, and a river that boiled from below. In 2011, a young Peruvian geologist, Andres Ruzo, decided to search for the mysterious river. There are many hot springs around the world, but they result from the effect of lava from nearby volcanoes. The puzzling part about this river is that it's 700 kilometers away from the closest volcano. It's the only river of its kind. Its temperature is unbelievable. And the size of the river? That's something else. As much as the river is fascinating, it's also dangerous. Ruzo talks about how he's seen animals fall in and slowly start to boil to death. The water fills their lungs and mouth, and they cook from the inside out. But people still swim in the river after heavy rainfalls when it's diluted with cold water. Yellowstone Yellowstone National Park is like no other place on Earth. A visit there is like a visit to another planet. The park is known for its incredible amount of colorful natural springs and active geysers. 500 geysers erupt up to 400 feet into the air. They're deep glacier-carved valleys as well as fossil forests. It's one of those places you should visit once in your lifetime because you wouldn't find stuff like this just anywhere. As much as it is beautiful, Yellowstone is a weird place. The 2.2 million acres of the park are dotted with bubbling mud pots, geysers that emit water, cinder blocks and decade-old pacifiers, and steaming hot pools of concentric rainbow hues. And that's not all. There are bighorn sheep, elk, and a 1,000-pound bison walking around. With all of these, you should know that Yellowstone is not the most peaceful place in the world. In fact, it's pretty chaotic. About 4 million people troop in from around the globe each year. You'll see people trying to pet bison, some challenging bison to a fight. It's not the safest attraction site. People have drowned while searching for hidden treasures. Some have even been boiled to death in thermal pools, and some have been eaten by grizzlies. But regardless, the park is still worth seeing. There are 900 miles of trails leading to waterfalls and mountain ridges and remote geyser basins where you won't find a single person. Yellowstone is so big that fewer than 10% of all tourists make it past one mile from the paved parking lots. Blue Volcano There are numerous volcanoes around the world. While some are highly active, others are reminders of past ruin and accidents. Some of the active ones erupt once every few decades, and others continuously spew molten lava. Of these types of volcanoes, there's only one in the world that has a massive acid lake and luminous fire, Kawaijin in East Java, Indonesia. The Kawaijin volcano is a fire-spitting mountain that's 9,183 feet high above sea level. The volcano spews highly sulfuric gases, which turn electric blue when combusted, unlike the regular hot molten lava from typical volcanoes. The blue fire, also called blue lava, is a phenomenon that occurs when sulfur burns. It's a sulfuric fire that looks like lava. It isn't the actual lava from a volcanic eruption. The lava that emerges from Kawaijin isn't any different from the bright red or orange colored lava at other volcanoes. But because of the extremely high quantities of sulfuric gases that emerge at high temperatures, along with the lava, the sulfur burns and its flames are bright blue. Note that only the flames are blue and not the lava itself, so the effect can only be seen at night. During the day, the Kawaijin looks like any other volcano. At night, the flames sparkle like liquid sapphire and cascade over the Kawaijin. It's so remarkable and unique, no other volcano comes close. Giant Footprint Giants only exist in fiction and fairy tales. That's what we believe. That's what you believe. That's what everyone believes. They're merely mythological figures we hear about in stories, right? But what if there's proof that once upon a time, like literally, giant humans existed. In Tapactuan, 
the proof was found. There's a giant footprint, six meters long, above a rock overlooking the Ache Sea, and no one knows where it came from. The local legend says that it's the footprint of a legendary figure in South Acha, Mr. Tapa. He was a giant hermit who was very obedient to God. He saved a baby princess from two dragons, and the spot where his footprint is is the spot he stood when he was about to throw his body into the fighting arena. The legend of it has become folklore for generations and is the origin of the name of the capital of South Acha Regency. The locals consider this spot sacred, and in 2004, the area was saved from a devastating tsunami because the waves were blocked and divided by the reef where the footprints were. Crooked Forest Some things are inexplicably strange, like this crooked forest in Poland. 400 pines were planted in this small village, around 1930. Each of them bends sharply to the north, three to nine feet above ground level, then curves back upright. Even more mysterious is the fact that the crooked trees are surrounded by a larger forest of straight-growing pine trees. Despite the numerous theories that have been proposed over the years, no one's been able to establish what caused the trees to adopt this posture. It's generally believed that some sort of human tool or technique caused the trees to grow in this strange J-shape. What do you think caused it? Aliens? Chemicals? The weather? One of the many explanations is that during the invasion of Poland in World War II, enemy tanks ran through the young forest, flattening the trees to the extent that they grew back crooked. But if this is true, why is it that only the tiny patch was affected? Some believe it's an effect of gravitational forces, but gravity pulls objects down, not sideways. The site is open to the public and will most likely remain one of those mysteries that scientists never find the answer to. Giant's Causeway The Giant's Causeway is a deserted beach made of massive basalt columns disappearing into the sea of the coast of Country Antrim and Northern Ireland. The magnificent cliff comes with such a rich history that it's often included in lists about what the eighth wonder of the world should be. Geologists, travelers, locals, and lovers of mystery are infatuated with this wonderful piece of nature, and it's surrounded by legends and scientific explanations. The legend states that a great, strong Irish giant named Finn McCool was standing along the Northern Ireland coast looking out towards Scotland when a much bigger and less smarter Scottish giant, Benendonner, started raining insults on him. McCool knew he was smarter, so he headed across the sea to teach him a lesson. To cross the channel, McCool worked really hard, day and night, to create a causeway by taking massive chunks of a nearby cliff and throwing them into the air. When he was done and crossed, he noticed Ben and Donner was way bigger than him. Being the smart one, he ran home and made it back in time to tell his wife. Together, they came up with a plan to trick him. McCool dressed up as a baby, and when his threat came, his wife told him that her husband wasn't around, but introduced him to the baby. Ben and Donna was shocked about how big the baby was and wondered what the size of his father would be. He ran for his life, and as he crossed the causeway, he ripped it up to ensure no one followed him. It's a very interesting story, but the 40,000 interlocking columns were caused by volcanic activity during the Paleogene period 60 million years ago. Yonaguni Monument It's either the Yonaguni Monument was swallowed by the ocean thousands of years ago, or it was built by aliens. The underwater rock pyramid is located 25 meters underneath the waters of Japan. Nobody knows how it got there, who built it, and when it got there. A young diver in the early 1980s discovered the monument while scouting for dive sites on the remote Japanese island of Yonaguni. He described it as an underwater Machu Picchu. We wonder what his reaction was when he found it. He must have thought it was the remains of a legendary city like Atlantis. Geologists examined the finding and concluded that the Yonaguni Monument isn't a work of nature, but a man-made structure comprising castles, monuments, a large network of buildings, a stadium, and other buildings connected by a complex system of roads and waterways. You'd be wowed by a visit to the Yonaguni Monument. There are steps that led to a stage. Being there, you would imagine crowds in the audience. Who were these people? There are also chapel-like altars with structures that look like gods the people worshipped. We just knew we knew the history of this little village, if we can call it that. Fly Geyser Fly Geyser is proof of Nevada's geothermal ability, subterranean heat, and wild geologic story. Here's a little story. In 1916, the owners of Fly Ranch, formerly known as Ward's Hot Springs, wanted to irrigate their 3,800-acre desert. When they drilled down deep, they found plenty of water, but it was too hot for agricultural use. 
Mineral-rich water started spewing out of this spot at around 200 degrees Fahrenheit, eventually turning it into a desert sprinkler nearly 12 feet tall. Years later, in 1964, a geothermal power company drilled a few miles away from the first spot. But the water wasn't hot enough, so they closed the well and left. The cap didn't last long, it dried up the first site, and Fly Geyser, a persistent spouter that's consistently emitting boiling water, was born. The boiling water has no off button. It's been gushing non-stop for half a century. Remember Fly Geyser was originally a well, so it brings hot water from the reservoir very quickly to the surface. The vivid rainbow colors of the geyser are also very attractive. It's a result of thermophilic algae. So, although the geyser is man-made, the science, colors, and experience are totally real. 100% Natural Sea Dragon Imagine stepping into Jurassic Park, experiencing the adventure of being chased by dinosaurs or just watching the dinosaurs do their thing. That's cool, right? Well, dinosaurs existed millions of years ago, and it'll be impossible to watch them. However, when their fossils are discovered by archaeologists and they do all their research, it takes us back and gives us a glimpse of what these animals look like what they fed on, and how they lived their lives many years ago. Joe Davis, team leader of Rutland Water Conservation, discovered the skeleton of a Temnodontosaurus trigonodon during the routine draining of a lagoon island for re-landscaping in February 2021. The skeleton is approximately 180 million years old and is the first of its kind to be found in the UK. The skeleton was complete from tooth to tail and was in such perfect condition that if you didn't know better, you'd think it died recently. The 30-foot skeleton is the biggest and most complete skeleton found in the country. The skull one is seven feet. It's also the first ichthyosaurus skeleton. Yep, a record-breaking dinosaur this one is. Ichthyosaurs were a fascinating group of marine reptiles. They resembled dolphins in general body shape and their size varied from one to 25 meters in length. During the early Jurassic period, the species was the largest marine carnivore on the planet. No wonder it's called the Sea Dragon. Ice Cave An ice cave is exactly what you think it is, a cavern with walls and ceilings made of ice. Ice caves are usually blue because if the ice compresses, all the air bubbles squeeze out and give the cave its blue color. Now, here's how these caves are formed. Temperatures rise in the summertime and sunlight partially melts the surface of the glacier. The water drains into the body of ice and seeps into hollows and crevices. Slowly, water flows till it reaches the underside of the glacier. Geothermal heat, which comes from under the ground, melts the glacier's base and creates subglacial rivers. Put all of these together and an ice cave is formed. One of the many cool things about ice caves is that every year, they're different, meaning experts notice changes within seasons and within years. Ice caves are very common in Iceland, and they can be very dangerous. People can quickly die from gas poisoning in ice caves that are formed by geothermal heating. So, it's a dangerous thing for tourists and visitors. Certain chemical compounds are constantly released into the air as the ice melts, like sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, and carbon monoxide. The caves made by flows of water in the summers are much safer. Stonehenge what we call Stonehenge today was built four to 5,000 years ago when was part of a sacred landscape that had a giant stone monument 15 times the size of Stonehenge. It's like a witch's magic circle in this speculated Druid temple discovered in the 17th century. Located about eight miles north of Salisbury in England is Stonehenge, a prehistoric stone circle monument, cemetery, and archeological site. Although there's no specific evidence of Stonehenge's original purpose, it was known to be aligned with the sun and possibly used for observing the sun and moon alongside working out the farming calendar. This structure is quite unique because of its differently shaped sarsen stones, which are arranged in a post and lintel formation. The origin of its smaller blue stones from 100 to 150 miles away in South Wales also contributes to its unique nature. Various archaeologists propose different conclusions to the original use of Stonehenge, such as a confederation of Bronze Age chiefdoms, a monument to the ancestral dead, a place of healing, and so on. It must really bother them that Stonehenge is one puzzle they can't crack. Sarcophagi of Karahia Funeral tombs of ancient wise men are located in the city of Luya province in Peru. The coffins carved in stone and displayed above the ground are called sarcophagi, each of the six of them is two and a half meters tall. 
They resemble six limbless torsos with large heads and massive jawlines. The people here had the tradition of protecting their dead and placed their sarcophagi in locations that were hard to find. Because of the location of these six sarcophagi, they were practically intact when they were found. The sculptures have exaggerated jawlines and are made of sticks, grasses, and clay. The locals would wrap the deceased in a cocoon of wild cane stalks tied up with twine and place them in a fetal position. The next thing after that was that the head was sculpted and placed on top. The rest of the caskets are painted white and overlaid with details of the body and decorated with yellow ochre and two red pigments. Some of the clay heads have a smaller, second head atop them, and we wonder what that represents. Spotted Lake The Spotted Lake is a sacred site and has been a place of healing for many centuries. It's located about 60 miles from Vancouver in the desert of the Canadian region of British Columbia. The lake is rich in magnesium sulfate, calcium and sodium sulfate, and in the summer, the water evaporates, leaving concentrations of these minerals forming circles on the water. So the minerals are responsible for the spots on the lake. Locals believe that each spot has its own medicinal purpose. The colors range from yellow to blue to green, depending on the mineral makeup of each spot. Native Indians would pray to the god and use the mud from the lake to treat their wounds, skin diseases, and muscle pains. It's a beautiful sight to behold. To watch the colors of the separate tubs shift during the summer, there are over 365 of them with geometric and natural shapes. The Spotted Lake is indeed magical. We can see why the natives consider it a place full of therapeutic healing and peace and healing in general. The Mare Lighthouse Not a lot of things are as beautiful and powerful as the ocean, and to be in the middle of it, to stand tall, undisturbed in the middle of the sea, is one great privilege. This is the life of a lighthouse. Ever since the French Lighthouse Service was founded, it's worked to illuminate the French coast. When lighthouses were designed back in the day, the force generated by ocean swells wasn't taken into account because there was no accurate assessment or report of how heavy the force of tides could be. But the engineers knew one thing, they were supposed to build heavy, mighty structures that would withstand the waves. One of the biggest ones is the one built on La Jumont. It became well known in 1989 after a series of pictures were released. The lighthouse has faced force winds and huge waves of 20 to 30 meters high that have crashed against it. Don't you wonder how these structures were built? Even architects and engineers today are unsure about how much force lighthouses actually experience. And now, no one's sure of their strength since they've been battered by waves for over a century. Just how many mysterious things do you think are out there? Things yet to be discovered. How many boiling rivers, million-year-old fossils, ancient cities buried underwater? They're probably a hundred times the number that's been found. Any which way, we'll be on the lookout, and you should too.